Hey everybody, I'm Dan Herring. Welcome back to my channel, Fish Den 365 Today, we're going to talk about jig fishing. So this video is going to be a specific detail about jigs that I've learned about over the years that I thought I'd share with you and that is that there's some conventional wisdom about how to set up your jig that I don't agree with based on my experiences and some other experiences of some of my fishing buddies as well. So on my left side I have a box of jigs from back in the day. So these are these are jigs that uh, are 10 years old or older and uh, I want you to take a look at them and see if you notice anything about them. So here's one of them. And what I'm wanting you to focus on specifically is this fiber weed guard. There's one. Here's another one. I don't know if you can see this or not, but I've cut some of the weed guard off here, up right here in the front of the bait. Here's another one where I've trimmed them from the top to down, specifically trimmed. And now let me show you what the jigs look like that I fish today. The weed guards, I don't do anything with them. I don't trim them. Uh, I do flex them if they're very stiff. I might, I might do some flexing of the weed guard up and down and back and forth, but I leave them the way they are. And I'd like to explain to you how I got to fishing my jigs like this versus what I used to do. What I used to do was based on what I would hear from almost all of the pros when they talked about jig fishing. Uh, a huge majority of the pros would tell you to take a jig with, uh, with a weed guard like this and then to take a scissors, take the weed guard and prop it like this and then right at the tip of the hook cut it straight across so that it would end up looking like this one, where you have less weed guards on top because you've cut it there, shorter here, and then it gets longer with just a few weed guards here. That's how all the pros, I mean a huge majority of them back in the day were recommending that that's what you do with your jigs. And so I thought, well, these guys know better than me. I, you know, they're, they're fishing all the time. I gotta do the same thing. But it always bothered me that I was doing it because I, I, didn't, know, I didn't know from my own experience why that should be. And what I was experiencing was at the time, I was fishing a lot of fallen trees in the lakes and, and reservoirs that I fish. These are trees that have fallen from the shoreline and, they're, and the, they're in the water. And you know, you throw your jig in there and what I learned quickly is when you do this or when you trim your jig so that there's very few fiber weed guards over the hook like this, what I learned is that you get hooked in the tree real easy. <laughs> in other words, you lose your jigs. Here's another one where I, I cut half the weed guards off so they're not as stiff, but then they catch the tree a lot easier too. So I would get hung up in the trees quite a bit and, and I just thought this is something I had to put up with with jig fishing because the theory went that if you didn't trim that weed guard like that, well then, you know, this could get in the way of the fish's mouth and they might not get the hook and, and therefore you might not get a good hook set or the fish might come off. And, you know, I, I never gave it a fair try this way to see if that was actually true in my experiences. But one, one day I was out fishing with a buddy of mine, John Tosca, and this was years ago now, and he liked fishing trees too. And him and I are similar in that we think the same way about things. We're critical thinkers with fishing, and when we're not fishing, we're almost always thinking about fishing. So, so we share a lot of, a lot of uh, information and notes back and forth. But anyway, we were fishing out there, and I noticed that you know, he was getting his jig through the branches a lot easier than I was. And I, I told him, you know, I was a little frustrated with, with getting hung up. And then he told me that, you know, he used to have that problem too until he stopped trimming his weed guard. And I said, well, aren't you losing fish when you, you know, because you didn't trim, trim your weed guard down? And he said he never noticed that he lost any fish because of it. In fact, he felt that it caught him more fish because he was able to yo-yo his bait through the tree branches much more without getting hung up and disturbing everything uh, and he said that he really didn't notice that that uh, that he lost any significant amount of fish that way so 
I immediately started fishing that way, and that was 10 years ago, and I haven't stopped. I, I don't think I've... First of all, I, you hardly do lose a fish with these kind of jigs, these bigger jigs that have these big hooks. The, the, the hook-to-land ratio is very good on them. And I can't say that I've noticed that I've lost more. In fact, I think if anything else, you know, maybe I've become a better fisherman with setting a hook or whatever, but I would say that today I lose less of them than I did back then. And one of the reasons for that may be when you do trim these down, yeah, you have you have less between the hook and the, and the uh, and the fiber guard, but in a way you're making the fiber guard stiffer because it's shorter. So you know, with a longer fiber guard, even though it's more material, it's not quite as stiff because it's longer, so it's easier to, to press that down. And when a fish grabs a jig, they grab it pretty darn good, and, uh, you know. And so I've never had an issue with it, and because I leave that fiber guard on there, I can throw it through anything. It, I can really we you know. I could I can get these things through almost any kind of cover. So over the years, I just I, I don't trim the fiber guards anymore. What I do do though, I'll, I'll check them because I fish more than one kind of jig. This is a this is a uh, a man's stone jig. I don't know if it's in production anymore or not. I like this jig a lot because it has a triangular head, so it comes through everything pretty well, and it has it's it's kind of got the best of all worlds when it comes to getting this thing through weaves, through rock, through wood. But uh, I don't, I don't trim the, the weed guard now. Whatever jig I use, I went, I like to make sure that the weed guard isn't so stiff that you know you can't press it down barely or something like that. And I'll flex it a little bit. I'll work it some, you know, just to make sure that it's 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 soft enough so that a fish can press it down. Uh, but you know, it, it's kind of it, you think about it from the from the pros perspective where they talked about trimming it, and it, and it kind of makes sense until you actually get your own experience and find out that it fishes better this way more effectively and, and even though this has more stiffness maybe than if you trimmed it you know straight and if, then if you trimmed it straight across like like that I haven't lost any fish I you know that they, they when a fish grabs this thing they must bite down pretty good on it because I get the hook in their mouth and you know I suppose that if you have the hook in the fish's mouth and this is here that actually might help them not from coming off that once, in other words, once they bit down on this thing and they're hooked, if this thing comes back up or stays there, well, it might actually help keep the fish pegged than if you had something very, very just minor like this with just a few bristles or, or cut in a way where the angle, you know, is a strange angle like this where, and it's much stiffer. Just a couple of pieces of food for thought, but, you know, my experience with the jig, I have full confidence just fishing them now <clears throat> without messing around with the weed guard, at least not trimming them or cutting them down. So if you're having that kind of issue, you know, getting it through, if you're fishing a lot of jigs through brush piles and through wood, and you're having trouble and you're, you're you know, you're getting hung up, try fishing it the way the way it comes with, uh, w regarding the fiber weed guard. And see, you know, I can tell you for one thing, it's going to come through the wood a lot better this way. <clears throat> and, you know, you get more bites because you're not, you're not getting hung up and disturbing everything trying to get your jig back. So from my point of view, and, I, and then I just started to take that and John did the same thing. He's fishing the weeds with it. We, you know, we throw these jigs in milfoil and, and lily pads and all these other kinds of cover. And uh, you know, if it works in the wood that well, why wouldn't it work anything where else that well? The fish seem to grab it the same way regardless of what cover they're in. And I, I don't really think I've had an issue with, with losing fish. Would love to know your experience. You know, I, you know my, my, my thing here is I know what the pros have said about it. I don't doubt that they've had their experiences with it. But their experiences might not be mine or yours. So I would challenge you to, if you do trim the weed guards and you are hanging up and it's becoming frustrating for you, try fishing the jig the way it is without with the weed guard the way it is. Maybe flex it some, get it flexible. But uh, you might find that you become more efficient because you're not hanging it up as much and that you don't lose fish when you do hook them up anyway. And that's been my experience. would love to hear yours. If you would uh, comment, let me know what you think. If you're a jig fisherman, what do you do with your weed guards? How do you fish in heavy cover? would love to hear it and to know a little bit more about your experience as well. Well, that's today's topic on Fish Den 365. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got something out of it. Try fishing these this way and see, see if it uh, doesn't make a more positive difference for you or see if you notice any difference. Uh, if you like the video, give me the thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We've got content coming uh, at least once a week. We're trying to do at least two videos a week, but 
some weeks are a little more difficult than others with my work schedule but I do what I can and I enjoy doing it and bringing the content to you if I don't talk to you before Christmas I hope you have a very Merry Christmas this is a time of the year to spend time with your your loved ones and your, your close friends enjoy it it goes by quickly We've got some real cold weather coming right now so the water may be getting hard or probably is hard by now for most of us and so uh, unless we're ice fishing it's hard to get out there unless we're fishing rivers and streams and maybe I'll do a little bit of that in the near future hope to get out there again soon we'll see how that all shakes out be safe out there and as always may God bless your fishing endeavors